refer to the great cricketer here and I'll say, this will do a little bit early. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the great cricketer, Shakib El Hassan. Fuck me, he kicked those stops over, piss. <laughs> England have lost this series, the series against India, the 100, the Ashes. They've lost everything. They've lost their minds. So that forget that back in the winner's circle. They've absolutely pumped the West Indies. Australia, who's going over to the West Indies in Bangladesh? I don't know. Heaps of them aren't, though. And hashtag RCDC includes some militia groups in South Sudan. My name's Ian Higgins. Sam Perry sits across from me. This episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, as they all are. You can use the code CHAMP for free custom design. Not bad. That's value right there. Pez, let's get straight into it because there's some things to talk about and things to dissect in this show. But Shaka Bell Hassan has been banned for three matches for kicking over those stumps, baby, so, in the Dakar Premier League, one of my favourite premiers. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you started with the most important part of this cricketing week. Mm. Look, I saw the footage, you saw the footage, the viewers saw the footage. Mm. Brad Hodge commented on the footage. Yeah, he did. Uh, oh. <laughs> Look, I wouldn't want my child to do that, but... Uh, I thought it looked pretty fucking cathartic. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's one of those yeah. things where you just go, ah, oh, that would feel good. Fuck yeah, that's you know, good. One for the good guys. There was a guy at my club mm. who regularly, uh, upon being dismissed at training, would smash all three stumps out with his bat. Really? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. a really, like a... Regularly. A, a swivel pull shot, you know, yeah, yeah, low yeah. to get the stumps and right in the middle of the stumps. Yeah. All three gone. Yeah, I've done that before. Have you? Yeah, not How regularly. How did it feel? <laughs> the, the infinitesimal moment of impact, mm. sweet relief and sweet Caroline, two separate emotions <laughs> and sweet emotion <laughs> and Aerosmith song. Okay, I've lost my train of thought Ooh. again. And then the second that that stump is uprooted from the ground because of the swivel of your bat, oh, I'm such a fucking twat. Now I've got to pick them up. Now this is humiliating even more because I've now brought attention to my own failures. Mm. Freud dealt with the idea about whether catharsis, that idea of purging pent-up emotion, actually made you happier, if that helped, yeah. or if it actually exacerbated your anger mm. and, and I guess, uh, what's the word, consolidated the idea that you react aggressively. I can't remember what he said, but I know he dealt with it. <laughs> he had a chat about it once to himself in some sort of soliloquy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. It's a bit like you know bringing a, a machine gun to a supermarket before turning the gun on yourself. Oh, Very it similar. was a bit like that. Very similar. Uh, I just wonder. He goes, you know, here in Australia, we don't get a lot of Bangladeshi narrative. Not enough. Not enough. But in say, Shakib Al Hassan, yeah, a good player, a great player to be sure. Uh, <laughs> we've got there a, are some levels. Well. He's, he's a guy with red mist. He's got some form. He's a red mistman. Now, plenty of great... He's a red mistman. Plenty of... I've always said that. <laughs> there he is. He's the red mistman. <laughs> plenty of great cricketers can empathise with that. Yeah. You know? It's almost like... You know, in, in marketing and in storytelling, you want to create a connection. Mm -hmm. You want the viewer, the consumer, to to feel like they know the characters. Take them on a journey. Has Shakib Al Hassan actually built his reputation out in Australia with this kind of behaviour? I say yes. It's relatable. Very relatable. relatable. Can we talk about the bounce? You know when he picked up all three stumps? Yeah, First I do. of all, excellent skill. Threw them on the ground in front yeah. of the umpire. And the umpire's like, well, okay, you've taken a lot of test wickets and you're a good all-rounder, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna retaliate, which is obviously your first initial mm. immediate reaction. Because this all came from an LBW that wasn't given right. I know there was some other stuff as well. Looked close. I'm not going to lie. It looked out to me. I thought it might have been just <laughs> outside the line. But, uh, okay, okay. I can understand why Shakib got upset because state players always get LBWs. 100%. Umpires. Yeah. Do you know who I am? He's, he's, yeah. It would have been bowling in his Bangladeshi trousers for sure. Of course. Yeah. But anyway, we picked up those three stumps and he threw them down. The bounce that he got from the from the wicket, mm. impressive stuff. Hard wicket. Yeah. Must, yeah. must have been flat. Hard wicket. There was a moment with one of them where he then stuck one stump back in. I didn't say which that. Which I can only – yeah, and he did it like quite – Paul, he, he dragged, like he sort of jabbed it in too far. I can only imagine the umpire <laughs> said, put that back in. How strong is this bloke? Yeah, well, yeah. exactly. He's got some form though, doesn't he? Because he's, he's only just come back from a two-year ban by not reporting a, an approach from a bookie. Right. He's done some stuff in the past where he's been photographed, like um, putting his middle, middle, middle finger up to the crowd. Um, there's some other gear going on as mm. well. Good I, stick though. There's actually <laughs> – hell of a player. There's actually an ESPN Crick Info article published 30 yesterday 30. 
So, so, so 30 for 30 on this incident, yeah. Not quite as good as the last dance, mm. but comparable. Um, and it's just talking about like his his history of indiscretion. There's quite a list. Mm. It's quite a list. He's a red missman. 30 off 30 could just be a great <laughs> <of> documentary. <laughs> 30 off 30. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Uh, now, Pez, before we get into the show, yes. uh, we have had some, uh, we've had some we've had some huge stuff going on our YouTube. Now, a lot of people obviously consume this through the ears mm-hmm. rather than the eyes. They, they just prefer it that way. Uh, but we had an interview with Shubman Gill, uh, which is on our YouTube, uh, posted yesterday, or posted on Sunday. Uh, and also we've been doing our dailies during the uh, the series for the England and New Zealand series. Of course, we'll be continuing on, continuing on that in the Australian winter, the Northern Summer, the World Test Championship final. That's on this week. The dailies, they'll all be on YouTube. If you want to get the audio exclusively, we're not going to put it on the feed here. It's going to be on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash cricketer. If you want to consume the great cricket through your ears, that's the way to do that. And if you want to consume the stuff going on with our daily podcasts, uh, covering about 15 minutes or so, the day's play that's happened the night before, and then obviously we'll begin. It's probably the best analysis you'll get as well. Continue, continue on to that for the India, the England-India series later on this summer as well. Indeed. That's patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. If that's the way you want to do it. Now, Pez, uh, England and New Zealand, the second test. Let's wrap up the, 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 the second test real quick and then the series. So New Zealand have just beat England by eight wickets at Edge Baston. Obviously, second time they've lost in a row at the Fortress at Edge the Fortress, yeah. First series loss for England since 2014. First home series loss since 2014, which was against Sri Lanka back in the day, seven odd years ago. Uh, but um, New Zealand made six changes Six changes uh, to their side, and they fucking pumped England. That's right. Pumped them. Wasn't even close. Yep. And it serves England right, the entire series, for playing their second-grade side. Yeah. New Zealand even retaliated by playing, well, you can do that. Here are seven PE teachers we rolled over. Because that by doing, <laughs> by doing so, and they yeah. were, they came out with seven PE teachers. Yeah. By doing so, they kind of eliminated New Z- uh, England's excuse that they were only playing their twos as well. And you said, no, we'll play our twos we'll and we'll still twos. pump you. Yeah. Because they pumped them in the first test as well, where England secured a beta draw. Yeah, they try to set up the game. They they were like teeing off in the third innings, England at Lords to try, sorry, sorry New Zealand to set up the game. Then gave England a game. You want to chase that? Nah, we we'll just have a stick for hundred overs, or Wait, seventy-five do you, overs. Do you reckon England thought because because they're trying to juggle this whole summer of eight thousand? There's heaps tests going and stuff on, like that. Heaps it's a bit going, going on. Yeah. You can pass it all. There's all sorts of different things. Yeah. Oh, do, do you reckon England thought at some level? So speak for them and the and the administration do, and the yes. high performance department. Yes. Do you think they thought? Despite resting a lot of guys, they could probably just about jag it. Well, you I was talking to Gilo, my friend, yeah. Um, and yeah, I do think that. I think there's because like, I thought they might just do it too. We just think, oh, like ahead of the series, I'm yeah. saying, like, ah, oh, you know, home conditions, mm-hmm. crowds are back, mm. Anderson Broad, Root, they probably have enough, and you know, New Zealand, uh, 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 a solid side, a solid if unspectacular yeah. side. That's yeah. how we view them. Yeah, I know they're in the final, and all numbers and results point otherwise. But sorry, that's what the gut thinks. That's what it is. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you look at. I think they would been looking at that side, Latham, Henry Nichols. Uh, yeah, Nicky right, Nicky. Right. It's, all, it's all Nicky. good. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. Why they play for the draw at Lords? They're just like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> I can't wait to get these bikes edge. We'll get them again, get the fortress. <laughs> And then, because they always win their crowds, yeah. be back eighteen thousand people there. Yeah. And got to say, fucking awesome to see crowds back. Of course. And I kind of actually think that's actually the most important thing about this series, because like the Edge Baston crowds were not treated to any sort of uh, festival of cricket for the for their home supporting team, but they were serving a great time. And I just kind of think about everything that we've all been through in the last mm. year with this pandemic. Just have people back in, just being around people, singing songs, drinking drinking lagers. That kind of gear. That's, yeah, actually, no, that's that, actually that's actually good, but the cricket was fucked. Yeah, no, they got they got three good days of it. Um, <laughs> and New Zealand are a they're they're a toughened machine who have found a worldie out of nowhere in Devon Conway. <sighs> yeah. Um, but England, mate, they're they're reaping what they sow. Yeah, they've they've, they've been reaping what they sowed. Uh, you know, there's been these efforts to connect it to the Ashes as well. What does this mean for the Ashes? I think it's a bit far away. I think it's about 8,054 narratives between now and the Ashes because of how much cricket's going on. Zach Crawley can't get one off the square at the moment. He'll probably become the world number one batsman twice in and out of form <laughs> yeah. before the Ashes. That's yeah. how much cricket yeah. he's going to be playing. Between Bubba Azam gets it back for a of bit. Of course, yeah, Bubba, yeah. yeah. Well, he, big boy, is he or not? Yeah. Um, and I think the Ashes is a bit of a – it's a bit of a crutch, you know. Like it's it's a, it's a meant to be mitigation for mm. what's going on. Oh, yeah, but this is all prep for the Ashes. England have treated this series like a pre-se- like preseason hit-out. 
mm. right? Mm. They've reaped what they sow. And I'm so glad New Zealand's twos pumped them mm. in that game as well. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into a World Test Championship setup, but like New Zealand have got depth. Matt Henry comes in, man of the match in this game, takes poles, yeah. takes big wickets in the in the third innings of the game where they just rolled England, had them seven for 70, bowled that for 120 in the end. Uh, they've got some depth, and he won't play in the World Test Championship final. They've rested Southie. They rested uh, Jammo. Jammo. They rested Mitch Santner. Mm, mm. Um, and did I say Southie just then? Yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, And then Kane didn't play, obviously. BJ and Watley. They, they rested the Grondom. Yeah, yeah. Colin. Uh, yeah. Great man. Colin. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> Gromit. <laughs> feels good to say. <laughs> it does feel good to say. <laughs> Colin and Gromit. Now, there's a show. Yeah. There's an animated show. Was it animated? Or was it Clay? I know it took a long time to make those shows. Anyway, um, so man, New Zealand are good, but I don't know what it will take. I don't know what it will take for people to start respecting New Zealand, but I don't oh. think it'll be winning the World Test Championship final. They've got to do something else. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. They've got to win in Australia, I the fourth-ranked team in the world. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> do, are you, are you, uh, calling the, are you calling crisis for England cricket? Yes, I am, Pez. And I mentioned this during our dailies, and I don't have the stats right in front of me, but they've got one player who plays test match cricket for England who averages more than 37, and that is Joe Root. The rest, and Ben Stokes is a guy who averages 37. He bats six for them. All the others average between 29 and 35. It ain't good enough. And in the county championship, there's only one guy who's already played test cricket in the top 10 county championship run scorers. It's Adam Lyth. He averages 20, played seven tests, and the other in the top 10 is Hashim Mamla, who will not be available for the Ashes. He's, mm. he's pulled out of that. So tournament. basically the best county championship players are in the side already. That's correct. That's the top five. As Nasser Hussain said, as we've all seen, I'm sure, the top five of the top five, Burns, Sibley, Crawley, Root, Pope. That's the top five. They'll bring in Stokes and bring in Butler probably, maybe Bairstow as well, not really sure. That'll, that'll, be, that'll be the side. I fucking love Ollie Pope. I like Zach Crawley. They've got 100 each. They've played about 20 test matches. They've, I've got to start scoring some runs soon, and it ain't going to get very easy against India, against Boomerah et al. on semi wickets, which they'll make it real cricket. Don't you think England, like the return of England's hybrid style players who can do a bit of both, score a few runs, take a few wickets, uh, is going to boost the top five a little bit as well? Yes, I though? do. You know, it, are we being premature? Are we being lulled as Australians into a false sense of security? Um, or are we merely kicking uh, the old colonial masters down because they are down? Why can't it be both? Mm. <laughs> I think definitely that like having Stokes on the side makes a huge difference to that team. Butler has Butler ever won a game from won a Test match? Yeah, from he has, yeah, he, he, has, has, he has, he has, he has. You're right, you're right. But they've played these guys. This top five have played with Stokes and Butler on the team before. They're not mm. winning a lot of games. There's a huge potential. I said this a while ago that like they could lose against New Zealand. They could lose against India. They put all the eggs in the Ashes basket, and they're going to fuck that up as well. So there's that. There's also some race stuff going on as well in their team at the moment, which isn't great. So it's all looking pretty ship shape for the Ashes. They should, I reckon they should be able to turn around and probably win like four one in Australia. What do you reckon? <laughs> I mean, I'd, I mean, if it, if this goes to show anything, is that not playing makes you a better player? Oh fuck yeah! In cricket, yeah, that's all I'd say because the Australian side they're not playing, so it's like mm, I can't even really remember what happened. Okay, yeah, I guess India knocked us over, but yeah, the quicks are good and mm. Labuschagne and Smith score runs and Warner's a thing, so mm. you know we should be okay. But they, these guys could be playing at the moment as well and getting absolutely dusted. Mm. Who knows? Better off just uh, not opening your mouth. Uh, he goes, New Zealand are a side in alignment. Um, in alignment, they're in alignment. They are. The stars are aligned for them in the sense that like. England might say, oh, we've been a bit white ball heavy, not investing enough in red ball cricket. So, well, fucking New Zealand's made the last two World Cup, ODI World Cup finals. Yeah. A couple of guys in the IPL as well. Now they're in the World Test Championship final. Uh, you know, they play their brand of cricket, which is they're nice blokes who have skeletons. Mm. And um, they're every chance. And we'll cover that later in the week. Now, the West Indies versus South Africa pairs is an interesting one. Now, South Africa won Is that, it? Well, interesting in the sense that I've, do you feel you're meant to say that? No, 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 no. I, I generally look at South Africa, who are seventh in the world. Now, uh, test rankings, what, what do they mean? I don't know. Exactly. But they've won. Let's find out. They've <laughs> do they know anything? <laughs> do they mean anything? Let's find out. What do they mean? Do they mean anything? Um, South Africa won the game by an innings and 63 runs before lunch on day three because uh, the wicket wasn't good enough. The wicket was a bit up oh, and down, to be fair. West Indies were rolled for 97 in the first innings. South Africa got 322. De Kock got 141. Not... First hundred after he'd been uh, he's been released from the captaincy duties or it was relinquished, 
And then they bowled West Indies out for 162. They were wickets from Ngidi. Nork, yeah, got seven for the match. And Rabada finished in the fourth innings with five for 34 of 20 overs. Not bad. Now, I'm looking at South Africa, mate. And look at that team. I still think they're a good team. I, st- I still see them as, like, strong. And if Australia played them in February or whenever that was, when we- March, when we were supposed to go there, I wouldn't say that Australia was going to win that series. I feel the same way, mate. I respect South Africa. I'd like- mate, the bowling attack's strong. But what is it, mate? I mean, all we can do is say, hmm. oh, there's a couple of things going on in South African cricket as well. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. But, like, every... Again, like a, a park, club, grade cricketer, or even a sports person, you know that feeling when you've got this team in the competition that you really rate, but they never seem to be high up in the table. Yeah. And you follow their results and mm. you go, why aren't they higher up in the table? They always dust us. Mm. They have heaps of good players. What's fucking going wrong yeah, what's, with those what's guys? Doing? Yeah. Now, we're not here to answer. I mean, we know the answers. We just don't want to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But they are that team for me. You can't understand why. Ngidi, Nokia, Rabada. Uh, Pretty good. Mate, it's incredible. Yeah. That's, a, that's an amazing pace attack. Maharaj got some wickets yeah. in this game. Quinton de Kock, Dean Elgar, a couple of other blokes around Va- that. I, I rate Van der Dussen. Van der Dussen. Um, Macram. Yep. It's good. So, yeah. Uh, what else do you say? They've obviously, they've obviously turned up against the West Indies. Yeah, I mean, the West Indies, I don't, I'd never really understand. I mean, they, they actually... They actually beat England in the first test match last year. Well, now, yeah. And Ross and Chase was taking polls. Cornwell was doing his thing. But, I, I, yeah, I, they're, they're short of run. I mean, Jason, Jason, Jason Hull is a good player. I mean, the results are just speaking for themselves. Obviously, England is shit. West Indies are probably a little bit better than them. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. like, South Africa and New Zealand are good. But we're, like, sitting here going, like, well, what's the 3D chess on this? Because, uh, <laughs> what does this know, all mean? Yeah, that could be Australia, but it's obviously Australia's good. And then, yeah. there's, you know, then well, I mean, we're England on that. Yeah. So now we had, I don't uh, trust the results. We had we had Nokia on the show last week, right? Do you reckon Australian audiences know who he is? No. Australian audiences. Not really. Australian fans. Not you? really. Yeah. They see a guy whose name sounds different to how it looks on paper. Yeah. North Jeff. Yeah. And uh, they're like, oh, I've yeah. seen that name around a little bit. Like, I've seen that yeah. guy's name in the paper, but yeah. not enough. They're not at, like, recognition levels where if you played against him on a Saturday, they'd be like, oh, who's this guy? This guy's real deal. He's real yeah. deal. I, I, was, I was watching him bowl. He's, he, so he's got he's, – he's, so he, he's bowled the fastest ball in the IPL history. He's about 156 or some shit like that. He's fucking rapid. He was mm. only bowling about sort of 140s. And then when we were talking to him last week, I think one of us asked him, like, do you reckon you can clock 160? And he's like, yeah. But he suggested that, I think, because he's coming in and out of these bubbles all the time, that his body must be stiff as fuck all the time. Mm. They're in hotels nonstop. Mm. And obviously, to, to be um, to so limber, to, to bowl that sort of speed, you're probably not getting that opportunity if you're cooped up in a hotel yeah, most of your be, life. Yeah. yeah, that'd be it, I reckon. Yeah. Eh? Fast bowling. That's what I'm trying to bowl quick. A couple yeah. of fast bowling coaches over here. <laughs> um, yeah, we love we, we, Nokia. Very, very big on Nokia. Um, and Rabada smashed uh, Joshua De Silva's elbow. And I still think about that a lot. And then tended to him straight away in, straight a, in away. a tender way. Yes, in a tender way. He took his helmet off, walked down the weekend, took his helmet off when he was lying on the ground. Very yeah. uncomfortable when someone else takes off your helmet. And you're getting, you? getting Alfred, yeah. You're getting Alfred. <laughs> the man, oh, the man happened to me, standing but over you. I don't know if I've said this before. I remember playing in a soccer match once and um, mm-hmm. a mate of mine's, uh, uh, well, his brother's playing. He's also a friend, but yeah, do- doctor. Not a big, um, like, not a, like he, he played right back. Mm. Big guys, a gridiron player. Played gridiron for Australia. Seriously? Yeah. They have international tournaments. They do, yeah. yeah. Jared Hayne trained with them. Oh, right, okay. Now, he's in jail at the moment. Sure. Jared Hayne. Yeah. That's a fact. Yes. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, so big guy, mm-hmm. big unit, went up for a header. Uh, he's a surgeon, actually. He went up for a header against his opponent, um, actually headbutted his opponent, knocked him out, then started treating him. <laughs> <laughs> that's alpha. That's alpha. <laughs> yeah, that's alpha. That's fucking dad dick energy right there. Now, Pez, uh, the Australians not going to this uh, West Indies Bangladesh tour. Let me, let me read you some names. You might have heard of them. Smith, Warner, Cummins, Maxwell, Stoinis, Kane and Jai Richardson. They said not to be going. Daniel Sams has already pulled out. Um, and Marnus is obviously, it was deemed worth, uh, not worth his time to leave Glamorgan. So he won't be going either. Mm. So He um, said, Marnus said, in order to play in a few matches, I would have to have quarantined for 38 days. Holy shit. So they decided, nah, just going to play some cricket in England. Dan Christian's been caught up into the side, 38 years old. Uh, obviously, good friend of the show. So we we celebrate that because that makes us feel like we play for Australia now. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is actually interesting. I think in relation to how England have treated 
their schedule in that this quarantine stuff, I suppose if you're not experiencing it and you just, I was actually surprised how recently it was when the Australian players came back, like got out of quarantine for the IPL. It was only like, it was basically a fortnight ago or something like three weeks ago, maybe. And the IPL finished like more than a month ago. Um, So it must be just absolutely debilitating. And they're just, just the way the cricket institutional setup is, some series mean more than others. Mm. And an ODI, a white ball series against the West Indies and Bangladesh away from home probably feels a bit like I've got other things that I'd want to do with my life. But, mate, it's an opportunity to represent your country. There does seem to be a difference. So that was going to be my point. When you're missing test matches at home, I don't know if Australian fans would cop that. Like if, if Smith, Warner, Cummins, and let's say Maxwell and Stoinis and Kane and Joe Richardson – were to all test players, and then they all were unavailable for a test series against New Zealand at home. Oh, I don't know if we'd cop that. I don't. No way. F- so there is a hierarchy of tests, many more than mm. than ODI cricket, especially well, in ODI in a non World Cup year. There's been some reporting around it, and I think the first thing to say about the six or seven guys who are looking to me is I think it's likely. It seems likely reading between the lines that they will, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not sure it's confirmed just yet. Uh, so probably important to note that. But do yeah, you care, like, do you care about that? Do you care about them missing those games as per, a fan? Personally, yeah. No, I don't. No, I, I, do, I. I don't care. And I think that we're going to see in a few weeks' time um, a ratcheting up of the idea that players are choosing, you know, club over country. So that's that's probably the interesting question. That's the all thing. these all these guys are IPL guys, and they'll almost definitely go to the IPL. Yeah, which. And so the rest that they're having now is probably to assist the fulfilment of their IPL contracts, right? right? But I think that would be quite like a one-dimensional or facile view of what's going on. I mean, the reality is that they're they're making a decision or a conclusion that like going to the Bang- going to Bangladesh and the West Indies as mm. against mm. the IPL, their families being at home a bigger summer is a low priority. Mm. Um, so the question becomes not like what's wrong with the players, but why are these series such a low priority? Right. Right. You know. It's so so often Bangladesh and the West Indies and mm. these kinds of ODI tours and T Twenty mm. tours are crowbarred into the um, the you know ass end of the year when the least amount of people are watching at the most inconvenient time for mm. players as well. Um, you know, like a like a piece of errant Tupperware, you know, into an already full drawer. Nothing wrong with the Tupperware, but you've already got too many of those tall ones and no lids. All right, yeah, and where are the lids? Yeah, all right, Couple where of are the lids? lids? Why can't I close this? Can we throw some? Yeah. Um, so I think these guys would not be missing these games because they don't care about their country, but the schedule is just so full, you know, like there are just, so, there's so much to play it's, it's, and, it's, and there's a pandemic and they're mm, cooked. Like mm. these guys are cooked. They're, they, they don't get to see their families. Mm. Um, people go, oh, yeah, boohoo, but you know, blah, blah, blah. But I just think if you can walk, try and walk in the shoes for a little bit of time, you would see it would be very difficult to then get back into a bubble again. It is not yeah. It is not a particularly critical tour. And if you look at the names, it's not a particularly critical tour for a lot of those guys who are well, well established in the side. Yeah, I think that's interesting. But to that end, I therefore understand it more when like Joss Butler, for instance, is not playing in this test series because he will also go back to the IPL and he's got an – India test series at home to play for and he's got the Ashes and he's got the World Cup. So I do understand it. Though I I can't quite yeah, figure out why Moeen Ali is playing in the Vitality Blast but he's not in the test squad. He wasn't even in the setup. I cuz I understand that like a T20 game doesn't last as long as as a test match. And emotionally Only just <laughs> it depends what the wickets are like mm. if they're unfair or not. If um if I can understand emotionally a test match must drain you so much more. The scrutiny is more high pressure, but Moeen Ali's playing the, for Worcestershire in the Vitality Blast. And uh, so he's still traveling around with those games and still playing them. I, I, I know, there's, but there is something about like just the disrespect shown to New Zealand in this two test series. They're like, okay, maybe it's just a sacrifice. Got, there's so much cricket. And just it did feel weird when the IPL was binned. And there was like a month where like literally no cricket was happening because that's the window in the calendar, in the world cricket calendar, where like that's just what happens, the IPL. So when there was no cricket being played and there's so much cricket happening basically from like now until, well, if you're an Australian or an Englishman, March mm. or February next year when the Ashes finish, 
there's just so much cricket that they you're gonna have to sacrifice one series, i.e. New Zealand, to to have these people survive. But then there's also an element I think where what's what's your hunger? What's your hunger to play? Because for instance, Dan Christian was playing in the Vitality Blast for North Ants, and he had to fly back home to then be able to quarantine if to then go to the West Indies. And he he's also in the IPL. He will also try and get his, his name into the World Cup, uh, the Australian World Cup setup. But he's at the end of his career, um, so I'm not sure. I, it, there, there could be a case for individual individual cases for individual people, different Probably. drinks for different needs. Some just some pretty overarching themes. I mean. Club versus country, the IPL is here. It's the truth. Mm. And there are occasions, and we're seeing it more and more. We've seen it with England. We're seeing it with Australia now. The IPL takes precedence. Mm. There, there are occasions where the IPL is more important to players and people around them uh, and the schedule through the ICC than certain tours to certain places. It's not going to sit easily with a lot of people. But that is the way it is going and it is completely driven by money, mm. no doubt. Mm. Uh, we'll be covering the IPL in South <laughs> <laughs> um, And so, so the players are a, um, a I guess, a, they're sort of caught up in that rather than the, the group that is driving it. Mm. You know, it's something that has happened systemically and structurally for a long period of time. And you can only guess that's where the trend is going it will be more so. It's exacerbated by the pandemic at the moment. But you're right. It does open up a couple of spots for guys. I thought the guys that Australia named as replacements are all actually quite interesting, fun players. Like Christo, mm. Wes Agar, interesting and fun. Mm-hmm. Ben McDermott. Hey, you're interesting and fun. You're an interesting and fun player. I'm a grown man. Uh, Nathan Ellis, Ashton Turner. I think they're all interesting guys. But, yeah, Christo Christo's the story. Mm. And he's flown back from North Ants, as you said. They're catching up for a, some training or other in, in Brisbane. Mm. It's like, and then they're going to trim down the squad. Mm. So, you know, you're saying to this 38-year-old guy, mm. come back, have a net. Yeah. See how you go. <laughs> if it goes well, you're on a 50-hour flight over to West Indies or wherever. Yeah. And if it doesn't, back to North Ham, a bit of quarantine, all good. Yeah. So it's a big net for Chris. Hell of a net, yeah. Hell of a net. You'd hope they'd said to him, listen, you're yeah. coming with us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know he's got like like we all do. You a lot know, of you, pressure on that net. Well, you got to bowl on the nets. If they slip out, yeah, bowls one to the side net, which oh, can happen you know, in, in professional cricket. Eighteen yards, you know how it works. <laughs> you do it. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the one where you cross your fingers and go, how amazing would it be if Christo sort of got his way into the team, performed, yeah, and um, and went all the way to the World Cup as the as the winner he is, mm. dominated, went out, then invited us, had a thousand. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring it back to oneself. <laughs> Pairs, this episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. As they all are, you can use the code CHAMP for free custom design. I want to talk about custom design. Do you? Because I, w- cause I want to, I just, that entire conversation last 25 minutes, just me thinking about Shaka Bell Hassan yeah. picking all three stumps up. Yep. And you can't tell me that's not an iconic moment. In a, in a, in a packed field of great you know, cricketing moments of blow-ups, Immediately think about, you know, Dennis Lilly kicking, um, what's his name? Javed Mandad. Javed Mandad. Who was wearing an I Heart New York hat at different times during his <laughs> test career. During test career, yeah. Um, get ready for a broken fucking arm. It's it's in the, that that's a little bit lazy. It's a little bit lazy. There's some Clark stuff there. But, mate, doesn't it go to show that all through the agenda of this show, mm-hmm. there's not much difference between international cricket and second or third grade cricket, apart from a few million dollars here, here <laughs> or there. <laughs> Shagib Al Hassan yeah. smashing the stumps over. Yeah. England treating test matches like preseason. Yep. Christo at thirty eight mm. millions in his still pocket, once. still having a have a net to get a game. Yeah. You know, there's not much difference, guys. I'm Apart not from a couple million. Yeah. At Christo's age, you, he must be thinking like you. You've seen me play before. You know. You know what I can do. He's got to he's got to prepare though. He's got to get around yeah. the boys. In the nets. JL's there, I guess. You know, you got to get yeah. there. You got to meet the boys. You got to get your new kit, take mm. it out of the plastic, and then you mm. got to chat about culture and stuff. Now, and then Christo, you play differently with Christo specifically. Would he be wise to wear his like the la- like one of his early Australian training kits to that net? Or, or I mean, just to show him the alpha, of course. And hopefully, it's a cotton singlet. <laughs> <laughs> Something from the late nineties, where the pipes pop out just nice, just nicely. He's a big yeah. rig, big rig, Christo. Yeah, did, did, 
when was so when did they blow, turn... I've got the blow ups to think about Dan Christian's Well, I'm chest. sure Budgie Smug will do, um, you know. Oh, they could do, do it all. Do grade cricket training singlets. They could do it I'm all. I'm sure they could do it all. Uh, no, someone, yes. When uh, was the last time the Australian team had cotton training singlets? Cotton? Yeah. It'd have to have been in the uh, early it's all, 90s. It's all polyester these days. I know. It? When did it turn polyester? I can think of this one photo with Shane Watson, Andrew Simons, and yeah, Mitch Johnson. Mitch Johnson's. Uh, they're in South Africa, I'm pretty yeah. sure. That's, no that, now, that, that's a great country to have your shirt off at training. Look at Faf. Yeah. Faf's only stuck because the PSL is happening at the moment. Was that, is that an altitude thing or something? Yeah, I think it's an altitude thing. <laughs> Reed just looks better. <laughs> yeah, it glistens a little bit more because yeah. you're closer to the sun, you sun. see. Yeah, you're, Got it. You're a bit closer to the sun. You're higher up the mountain. <laughs> you're closer to the sun, so it's hotter. Faf <laughs> so I saw him doing an interview with his PSL team. I'm not sure who he's talking to, but there's a guy, there's a guy who's playing there. I don't recognize him, but he's, he's a heavy set fellow. And there's just comparisons. Every interview that he's been Sp- spoken with and to Faf, he's comparing himself to this overweight guy. Right. And now they're doing interviews together, comparing like, and Faf's obviously famously just training without his shirt on all the time. And there's all these tattoo questions going on and it's, it's very uncomfortable. Mm. It's a bit fat shaming for me. Right. Um, not, 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 not that Faf's doing that. I just feel like external sources are doing that, exacerbated by people like us. But um, anyway, yeah, so Shaka Bell Hassan on some budgies, I reckon. That's where I was going with that. Where can you get it? Budgiesmuggler.com. Okay, here goes. This man was born in Australia, raised in Australia, lives in Australia. Uh, he played cricket for England. <laughs> Four tests, 35 ODIs. As he rolls his eyes at that <laughs> intro, he's seen, a, he's heard a thousand times before. <laughs> 14 is captain. And as I look down the barrel, he goes, he seems to be in some kind of car park uh, on the Gold Coast yeah. conducting this interview. Adam Holyoke, such a pleasure to have you on the show this week. Hey, guys, how are you? Very well, thanks. Um, li- living in my car these days, English, English, ex English pommy cricketer living in Australia. This is how I get treated. <laughs> oh, it's a nice car. It's leather seats there. You didn't obviously, you didn't, uh, yeah, you yeah. didn't drop down the price. Nice be- bed in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam, uh, you've got a um, such an interesting story in terms of your career and, and where you were raised and then where you played and stuff. I mean, can you can you start with your relationship to grade cricket? Um, yeah, I've got an interesting one. I guess I left uh, Australia at like around 12 to go over there. So my first real uh, intro into grade cricket was when I came back. I think about the age of 18 or 19, around that, I came back. I'd already was playing professional cricket back in England at that stage. And um, so I came back and started playing grade cricket in Perth. So, um, yeah, that was my first intro into it. So uh, as, as you can imagine, mate, uh, I know there's one you guys love. I love the dynamic you guys give on the great cricket, but I think the one thing which I haven't seen that you might have put it on there, but is the is the overseas pommy cricketer coming into the great situation? That's one mm. thing I haven't seen one of those analogies yet, mm. but mm. I reckon you should get it in there because I think they're pretty. It's a tough gig being an English uh, pro coming mm. over and playing for a great side. It's not. <laughs> Pretty, I think it's the highest. I felt more pressure doing that than playing test cricket. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny you say that because we've talked to a few uh, like English internationals on the show, and the sentiment I tend to, tend to get from it is that like Aussies all think that all grade cricketers think that they could play county cricket. You know, that's mm. the like that the county cricket's about the same level, and the England internationals kind of just roll their eyes and humour them. Like, was that your ex- like you would have played in the nineties though, which was you know the golden era of Australian cricket. Mm. You know, was that your experience as well? Well, yeah, and it was hard to really to disagree with it because we were getting pumped every time we played Australia in, <laughs> in the international. So they're literally great cricketers, you know, second graders thinking that they could, they, you know, if I was in England, I'd be getting paid 200 grand a year to be, um, to just bowl my little like uh, uh, medium paces off five steps. It's, it's all, you're all got bits and pieces cricketers playing for Australia, so for England. So it's, um, yeah, there was definitely a lot of that, um, and it's you just got if you're going to come out and play, you just got to have thick skin and you got to wear it. And I, I, don't, I don't reckon there's an excuse or a um, there's the reason why there's so many guys who have come out, played great cricket, and then gone back to England and been successful is because, in a way, it kind of toughens you up. Mm. Were there any specific experiences that toughened you up, or was it, was it more on the field or off the field? And if off the field, can you be specific mm. in the showers? Uh, <laughs> um, no, I think it was just, just in general. There's always those old guys around the club who just, you know, when you when you're an overseas player, it's just 
if you don't get wickets, they just want to tell you how shit you are. <laughs> um, and, and, they're, and they're not afraid to express how shit you are and the system that you play in. So I think it's just dealing with that and then going out to play with the other side hating you, um, your own side in a funny kind of way wanting you to not succeed mm -hmm. so they can have a go at you as well. And it's just if you can overcome all that, it's a really it's a real tough environment. A lot of people said to me, like, oh, you know, grade cricket, you know, where does it sit compared to county cricket? I said, mate, grade cricket is harder than international cricket. Because <laughs> when, you, when, you're playing, when you're playing internationally, as you guys wouldn't know because you haven't been there, but let me tell you about it. Is that <laughs> Not yet. When you're there, I, I, I got that. I got that a little bit of Brad Hodge. He's, um, I'm dating. Uh, he, he told me about you guys. He said, just remind them they're just clubbies. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd, 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 I'd get it in there early. Um, when, you, when you're playing international cricket, the, the pressure's equally on you from, from everywhere. But when you're going and playing grade cricket, you're the focus of the attention, your side, the opposition side, and mm. everyone's just wanting to remind you just how bad you are. And I think it's – I honestly think – I'm not sure that's the same for people who grew up in Australia, but for me, it was as tough – as international cricket in a, in, a, in a different kind of way, of course, skill wise, it goes without saying it's not, but just the pressure that's on, on there. It's, it's, I've never experienced anything like it. And guys who play great cricket, they're not mugs. They're good. They can bowl a line and length and they're prepared to just hang in there and, and do that mm. in the hope that they get your scalp so they can tell everyone about it. Mm. So. Yeah, we could, we could play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, and you did you feel it was different for you than other English cricketers because you grew up in uh, you grew up in Sydney uh, again you know and Sydney siders of that era will will believe themselves to be part of the golden generation of cricket as well. You, you're actually from around where I was as well in Gladesville. Did you always feel there's always been a bit of Aussie in you anyway? So you you know you've had a little bit of that exceptionalism. Yeah, um, and I always say to people, there's um, I don't think anyone hates anything more in Australia. There's nothing more hated. Than an English cricketer, maybe, maybe, maybe the tax man, maybe parking inspectors, something like we're in that sort of category. But there's one thing that is more hated, and that's uh, an English Test cricketer who was originally from Australia and appears to have been def defected. So um, I feel like I got, I got it extra. Um, I, I did. It was my brother actually who was um, who, who played for Gladesville for cricket oh, down there. But I grew up in Ballarat. Um, right. The mighty cricketing town of Ballarat. So uh, it's uh, yeah. So I do have those connections. Uh, it's it's hard to um, to know how to react because actually when we were playing, um, we we're playing. I think the first time they ever had national anthems was at uh, the, the One Day International Australia versus England. I think it was the world record crowd at the time, ninety five thousand people at the MCG. And um, we lined up. They decided they're doing the national anthem. So it was that. It was kind of at that moment. I'm standing there, and I like, we'd never done that at cricket before. And they did started doing the English one. And I was like, oh, I don't really know the words to this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Aussie one came on, and I was kind of like, shit, I learned this at school. But don't sing, whatever you do, don't sing. Just like <laughs> it's going to look real bad. So um, yeah, the patriotism's like, yeah, interesting one, mate. Interesting mm -hmm. one. Okay. Well, let's 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 talk about shit club cricketers and um, England cricket in the nineties. Um, <laughs> I, I want to know about uh, you, you. You had your test of boo, Nottinghamshire fifth test of the ninety seven Ashes. I want to know if Australia had the fear factor just yet. That was still under Mark Taylor, but the War Brothers were in there. Warren, obviously McGrath, but did going into that test series? I know you came into the series late. It was a six test series back then, but did Australia have the the fear factor just yet? No, oh, yeah. Yeah, they were um, they were the number one side in the world by a good in Test cricket by a fair distance. Mm. Um, I think they just probably tipped the West Indies off their perch probably for the couple of years leading into that, and they were they were they were ascending. Mm. So um, yeah, they were they were the best side in the world, mm. no doubt. And, and Warney was kind of in his peak. Um, people were very conscious and aware of, of him. Um, obviously, McGrath was. It was unbelievable as well. So they they were um, they were definitely definitely a very mm. scary side to play against. I mean, the batting, everything, every department. Mm. 
I know you seem quite mentally disintegrated by that. <laughs> Adam, just the way you talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us about Warney as well? Like, yeah. uh, like you look back at old footage. I mean, early Warn is my favourite Warn. It's like you know you like like a band's old stuff better than their new stuff. You know, it was pre-injury. It was wild. The ball spun everywhere, and particularly bowling to Englishmen. I know it was everyone, but there, there almost seemed to be a sense of like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, you know, not Mate. seen anything like before. Like, can you take us into your, your shoes there? Yeah, it was. It was literally like that. Um, I, no one knew what a flipper was. I was a professional cricketer for Surrey, and then and then they started talking about the flipper. <laughs> And we, no one in England actually knew what a flipper. The only thing I thought flipper was a dolphin, mate. The last thing was, uh, I was like, I didn't know what was going on. Um, obviously, we, you know, you watch TV and you work it out. And, um, but yeah, the aura and mystique around him. There was no one bowls leg spin in in county mm. cricket. Mm. It's like cold fingers, hard ball, tiny outfields. Like this pitch is not conducive to spin. Three day cricket before that, it was like. No one bowls leg spin. Mm. So all of a sudden we've got this guy who not only does he bowl it, he bowls it really well. Yeah. yeah. So and and he's telling you about it as well. So um he was quite happy to talk to you the whole way through it. So it was it was people don't think of like a blonde haired, chubby little guy who bowls some leg spin, you know, as being intimidating. People think of Ambrose and whatever. Mm-hmm. But mate, he was um he was so confident and he's aura on the pitch. Um he definitely had the wood over a lot of the guys in our side. Um, you know, I, when people say, you know, who's the best you ever faced? I would say just for actual like deliveries, just the ball, I'd say Murley was the best. But Warren, if you add the whole mm. persona, the intelligence, cricket brain, um, his ability to read the game, I, I think he was the best all round. Yeah. You ever get the circuit with him? <laughs> this, well, yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, he, he's a really good guy as well. Um, I, I like him, eh? He's um, he's a different cat to the to the rest, you know. He's he's bigger than life, and he loves he loves the fact that he is. I think so. Um, it's great. You need people like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I love playing against him. Uh, actually, oh, you guys will like this story. Um, so we played the one days, and I he he just come off of an an operation, so he didn't go that well. And me and my brother kind of got the better of him there. I get the feeling. After we won the after we won, got to the position where we won the series, I got the feeling for the rest of the series, he just tried to just not show us too much because he knew we'd be playing in the test series. Um, anyway, we didn't get picked for this test, and we came in for the fifth test. Um, and I, at this stage, I, I, like I got man of the series in that in that one day series, mm. and we won at three 0 And uh, Australia were coming off some bad form, so I knew when I came out to bat that I'm going to get it. I'm going to, like, you just, it's, you just know it, mate. You, yeah, you know, we've yeah. got Healy with keeping, <laughs> Taylor at slip, Mark War second slip, Warney at third slip, Steve War in the gully. <laughs> You're going to get it, aren't you? It's like, come on, did I, like, couple of nice other people, there. like Michael, Michael Slater's floating around. <laughs> so, like, it's, ah, they're all pretty normal blokes, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Peaceful it, guys. It's like, mm. So I came out and I'm thinking, well, it's my first test. I know I'm going to get it. It's just, a, and I'm, you know, I'm obviously, yeah, I've just had that really good performance against them in the one day, so I know they're going to be out for me. I thought they might let me take guard first, but, you know, <laughs> they, they, they they started and they're like, they, you know, come on then, boys, let's have this bloke out. Here he is. And, you know, when you're playing in the test match, obviously it's a big moment. You, you're trying to get into the zone. I try and explain this to the people I coach. Just be present. Just be present. So I'm just trying. Glenn McGrath had the ball, and I'm just in concentrate on the scene, block everything out. It's not Glenn McGrath, just you and the ball, you and the scene. Come on, then, boys. Let's have this bloke out. Here he is, playing his first game, playing his first game for England. All his family back in Australia, <laughs> wishing he was playing for Australia. Uncle Rex. I was like, shit. You know, they know Uncle Rex. <laughs> like, how they know Uncle Rex? <laughs> And then they're like, Auntie Jan. I was like, how the hell, how the hell do you guys know Auntie Jan? They've gone away and found out the names of all my, my relatives. So I'm sitting there and I'm going, okay, no, no, back on the zone, back in the zone. Seam, Glenn McGrath, seam ball. And then I'm like, all I can go th- in my mind is, I knew Warney's a bit of a woman at the time. I was like, has Warney been there with my Auntie Jan? Because I was on my first ball. <laughs> 
That's all I can think about. Like, I mean, I, I, that first ball is just a blur. I'm just trying to solve the puzzle. Has Warnie been around the same like Auntie Janet? <laughs> Fuck it. Um, you also played in one of the more famous test matches in the last probably 20 years uh, or, or more, 25 years, because it was 24 years ago, 1998 at Kingston. The, uh, the, oh, fam- yeah. the famous abandoned game after 10 overs, England were 17 for three. Ambrose and Walsh absolutely peppering the English bats, and especially Alex Stewart. Uh, there's, there's, there's great footage of it on YouTube that you can see. Well, great footage because I didn't have to face it. Mm. Um I mean, you, you you didn't get a chance to bat, unfortunately, Adam, in that game. And I think you, I think John Crawley might have been next, and then you were uh, doing it six, I think it was. But you That's must right. have, you must have been pushing Atherton out in the field to be like, mate, call this off because I'm not fucking facing this shit from Ambrose. <laughs> well, I was I was a little bit nuts at those days. I was like, I I wanted I was just punchy and wanted to fight all the time. So um, <laughs> I, I was there, I wasn't right. When I look back on it now, I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, get this thing called off. <laughs> yeah. But um. It, it was. It was like, and I remember um, Phil Tufnell, um, old Lionheart Phil Tufnell. Mm-hmm. He was um, he was trying to get it called off. He was batting eleven. He was going around the change room, getting towels, seeing what else he could fit down. You know, there wasn't many. You know, the arm guards. I think had only just come in, so he's trying all them on, and it was um, it was pretty scary stuff because oh. the pitch was like. Up seen a lot of pictures in my time and you see you don't there's often nothing to suggest that it's going to be that bad sometimes they look bad but they play all right never have we gone into a game knowing that it was going to be it was going to be a nightmare mm. because um um sorry about that a phone call right. um the pitch was was like this mm. and there was a string which they have along the side of the pitch yeah. so that the lawnmower can go along it to keep it straight mm. and that far apart, it was the string was touching the ground at that part, but in the middle, the string was that far in the air, meaning that the pitch was just like a corrugated roof. Mm. If it hit the upslope, it basically hit you in the head. If it hit oh. the downslope, it went along the floor. And with Ambrose and Walsh, these guys are bowling <sighs> fast. Yeah. And it was literally every ball. I think someone said there was about, I think we played about, 10 overs or something like yeah, that. 10 overs, yeah. And there was some, something like only 10 balls behaved as they would you'd expect them to. The other the rest of them were just either at your head or mm. straight along the floor. And it was um, it was farcical. We were trying to get it called off. They, mm. Their bowling attack, Ambrose, Walsh, Kenny Benjamin, Nixon McLean, mm. all probably bowling 90 mile an hour. Yeah. Our bowling attack was Angus Fraser, <laughs> who was like 75. Uh, Andy Caddick, he might have touched 80. Myself, who like 60 <laughs> and then and, and Phil Tufnell. So I'm thinking, I was like, holy shit, like there's like cannons against pea shooters. So yeah, yeah. we were actually lucky that we got that called off because uh, someone could have, that was dangerous out there. Mm, Wouldn't yeah. have been too dangerous facing me, but mm. what toughers, but yeah. um, those guys were pretty scary. Well, obviously, if, if it if it, uh, if it seems it spins, obviously, so that was, I'm sure yeah, you, guys been, you guys would have been fine. Because yeah. yeah. Atherton won the toss and he decided to have a bat thinking that the wicket was only going to get worse. I mean, so... Did you guys have a team talk before that, thinking like, "Hey, if we win the toss, we'll have a we'll have a stick here"? Or were you was was there like when when balls are going over the keeper's head from like half volleys, and you know guys getting peppered? Like, what's the conversation in the dressing room? Is there fear? I mean, you're you're punching walls, brothers. You're headbutting walls by the sound of things, or mm. toughnel. But mm. <laughs> but um, you know what's 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 the conversation going on uh, leading up into that toss, and then when it's all happening as well? Well. Uh, look, we didn't know it was definitely going to do that. Mm. There was a suspicion it wasn't going to play well. Mm. But um, I don't think – because we'd played a game against uh, Jamaica mm. just the week before. We got 250 and um, and we bowled them one by an innings. Right. It was the same sort of pitch. Um, so we, we thought it was going to be – it wasn't – as bad as this one played, mm. but those the Jama- the Jamaican side didn't have Ambrose and Walsh, so um, <laughs> it was yeah, it was just all of a sudden we're in it, and this is really scary, mm. and it's um and really real. So mm. I think it was it just it was a unique situation. None of us had ever been in it before. Uh, I've never been in a game that's been abandoned before mm. or since. So um, it was a unique situation that I don't think anyone could have prepared for. So. I think it was just so laughable and so dangerous that that actually became a realistic option. Yeah. And I, it was, you know, when Lara 
who just likes scoring 400 against England for the fun of it is trying to get the thing called off. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a dangerous, you know, it's a dangerous pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Adam, you would have been very aware of comments from uh, contemporaries of yours about the current England team. And I say that adding in that you're the batting coach for Queensland as well. So if I could put yeah. this as like cleanly as possible, all of your mates don't think you should bat on off stump and we should do it the way that they did it and everyone did it before it. Can you give any hope to England fans out there that the current crop can bat? And what do you think about batting on off stump or whatever NASA's talking about? Well, I suggest that probably the reason why NASA's in the commentary box and not coaching is for that very reason. The game's moved on. Um I'm not saying you have to bat on off stump, but, you know, hey, there's some people around who are doing it pretty well. So it's just like anything. Like, if you bat badly on middle stump or middle and leg, like we did so regularly in the 90s, then people are going to say you're doing it wrong. I think the fact that people are batting on off stump is just a new thing. And when it doesn't work, then it's very easy to say it's wrong. Mm. Um, You know, there's plenty of examples of people who bat on off stump who do it well. Steve Smith does it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um. I just think that at the moment they're just not batting well and those guys are paid to to make comments and it does come across a little bit um a little bit like oh back in my time and it's 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 easy to do it's easy to do back in our day everything was better uh, it's it's generally not you know the 100 meters they're faster now than what they were back then they're jumping high they're running faster Mm. And yet, cricket's the only thing that's gone backwards. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Mm. He's got to play straight. I think, I, I, yeah. I, I think that Manus, obviously, he's another one who gets across the off stump there. And uh, there's, there's a lot of players, more and more players at Queensland are doing it. Uh, they're trying to get their right eye on across onto off stump. So anything outside their right eye, they can let go. Um, but when it goes wrong, then, of course, you're going to have to face the criticism. Mm. And uh, more broadly, there's a lot of people out there, I think from England and Australia, who are worried about what uh, the current team has just displayed against New Zealand and what it might mean for the Ashes coming up. Uh, w- would you say they should have some hope or some faith or, or are you extremely worried? Um, well, it's, I'm neither really because six months in, in international cricket is such a long time these days and back in the other days it wasn't old days it wasn't but now we saw can't remember when it was not the last Ashes series in England the one before um, England won that series and then came out here six months later I think it was because of the Olympics there was like a really short turnaround and Australia won like resoundingly um, just in the space of six. so things changed pretty quickly mm. also the, you know Jofra Archer coming back will be a difference out here I mean, if we look at England in the past coming out here, it's been hard because we haven't had the pace. We come out here on the kookaburra ball. It's not seeming and swinging all over the place. And we've, and we generally have been outgunned in the last few by Mitchell Johnson or Mitchell Stark or just pace and, and bounce. We come out here with our, you know, medium quicks who nip it around in England and it's, it doesn't work, but we've got some firepower of our own now. Joffrey mm-hmm. Archer, Mark Wood. Mm. These guys are going to make it harder. Um, it's interesting. You've got two sides who are kind of on the, on the rebuild a little bit. So we've got some places up for grabs. So I think it'll be a good series. I don't, I don't think just because they've lost New Zealand uh, were the number one you know, side in the world. Going, you know, they're about to play for the test championships and their conditions, are, they've got bowlers who can make use of the English conditions very well. So I wouldn't be reading into it. I mean, you've got to read into it, but... Mm. It's not disastrous for the Ashes. Mm. I know you wouldn't. You wouldn't have obviously, you know, grown up coaching Marnus, but his his sort of transition over the last like three years, from being a guy who averages thirty in Shield cricket to now averaging sixty whatever in Tests, is unbelievable. And I'm not surprised he bats on off stump because that's what Steve Smith does. So he mm. just does whatever Steve does. Mm. But like, is can you? As a coach, you know, can you see something in Manus which has changed his drive or his attitude, or he just needed a, a taste to get to the top to then to then excel? Like, because it's we almost sort of take it for granted now that Australia's number three is Manus and he just averages sixty five, and that's just normal. But like, mm. literally, probably two and a half years ago, it was like this guy's on the outside and he's no chance of doing anything in Test mm. cricket. Yeah, it's about when I joined as the batting coach for Queensland. <laughs> <I think. laughs> 
just change his grip or just yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bat, no, I just got to get his elbow elbow up. Get your elbow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get just your watch elbow the up. ball. Yeah, just watch the ball harder. Yeah, exactly. So, um, no, he there's there's a number of factors which have which have um come from of him be having that improvement. He's always had that enthusiasm, and I said the best thing you can have as a batsman is obsession. Mm. And he, that guy's obsessed. Mm. He loves sort of, sometimes he just he just follows you around, just wanted to talk about cricket. Like it actually it's changed. Well, it's changed. And you guys will probably appreciate this, but I know you you like having your, you know, your stories about the tapes on your helmet. <laughs> when he first came when I first joined, he used to follow me around, asking, talking, just not for advice, just you know, discussing problem solving for batting. Mm. And then after a couple of good series, now he walks around asking me to walk with him so we can have discussions on it. So there's just a, this hierarchy the change. Hierarchies, yeah. Adam Walker. Hierarchy with me. change, yeah. yeah. What's uh, how would you describe your like do you do you have a philosophy on on batting? You know, what is it that d- defines you or what's your point of difference as a as a batting coach? And you're obviously batting coach of a Queensland side that have just won the Sheffield Shield and mm. uh, some successful batters in that as well. You've got Manus and Usman Kawaja as well. You know, what what is it that you're you know, what's the secret sauce? What are, what are you telling these boys? Um, well, as a, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time with them on the mental side of the game. So I think it was Steve Waugh back in the day who said, um, I'm, not, I'm sure he said it in public some stage, but he said to me, you know, like we, we spend, you know, everyone says 90% of the game's in the mind and 10% physical. Why do we spend 90% on the physical and or hundred percent on the physical and nothing on the mind? So, um, I, I've, I've had a little bit of background in, in fighting, um, after I finished cricket and failed at business, I went and did fighting for a bit. Um, and, and then I'm also studying psychology. So I've, I, a lot of the stuff I talk to people about is the mental side of things. And then just trying to work out what works for them. You can't just tell everyone to just, if it was as simple as like, just bat like Steve Smith, well, then everyone would bat like Steve Smith. It's not like that. You've got to work out what this, you know, this tall batsman, the short batsman, you know, the shorter batsmen, you have shorter levers. They can mm. usually better cross batted shots. Taller batters usually up and down the wicket. Um, it's, there's so many aspects, and you've got to work out what works for that batsman. Um, I like the fact that you've tried to get me to give all my coaching tips away in like a, a forty second question. But. <laughs> Actually, it was, it was more like a job interview. You know, I, I figured yeah. there's a couple of jobs going in England cricket at the moment. <laughs> they, they need a coach. You know, you're just giving me a platform to like advertise. Oh, they all listen. This is the technique cast uh, that people listen to. So, um, no, you obviously, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to give away uh, too many secrets. Is it is the is coaching the national side something you'd be interested in down the track? Oh, I'm just so far away from it. Um, which country are we talking about? Oh, that was a, tr- that <laughs> I've got, was a test. I've, I was... got passport. I've got an Indonesian passport too. I reckon <laughs> I, I coach them. Um, I, I, uh, I've, um, I coached Hong Kong for a bit, yeah. which I know isn't, isn't really Australia or England. And I'm so far away from being putting my name in the hat to do that. It's yeah. a bit embarrassing to even suggest that that's a possibility. So, um, of course, if you know things change and I got mm. more into my coaching, and mm. that would be something that any person would love to do, wouldn't it? You guys would be putting your hand up for the job as well, I reckon. Hundred percent, Adam Holyoke. Thanks so much, mate. Uh, wishing you all the best for your work with Queensland. Uh, hopefully, you can move out of your car uh, soon, <laughs> and um, and there might be some England gigs ahead for you, mate. If you keep doing such good work uh, with the Queensland boys. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Hashtag Ask TDC, Pezzy lad. Uh, and I will just say one more time, if you want the all the audio we do for our YouTube, if you just want to consume TGC through your ears and through your heart still, patreon.com forward slash great cricket. It's a huge week coming up. Huge week. World Test Championship final. Do you reckon people in England and Australia, do you reckon they give a fuck about the World Test Championship final? No. I get the feeling that that's true. Well, I, think, I think they'll be more interested once the game starts. I think so. Do you think we cared about the World Cup final? Do you no. think Australians no. care about cricket that they are not involved no, in? Now, let so me tell you something. No. The rights to broadcast the World Test Championship final yes. into Australia yes. have not yet been bought. Fucking hell, we, we, could pick, we could pick that up. Well, careful, don't give away the secrets. <laughs> You'd expect... Uh, like Fox Sports, KO will pick up 
pick it up. I would have thought so. Just towards deadline, given you'd probably get it for cheaper then. I don't pretend to know much about sports business, but yeah. I think that is a signifier mm-hmm. of the of the level of interest. I mean, I'm not sure what pr- – look, I don't know. I don't know what price the ICC are putting on it mm. or anything like that. Mm. But uh, that might be a signifier that, you know, the sports media broadcast, the, the chief one who does these overseas games into Australia um, sees – Australia's interest is being so low. Australians' interest being so low that you know you can just pick it up on the cheap at the end. Do you know? There's how no bidding. Funny war. would it be if we bought them because we did not have the apparatus to present it in any meaningful way. Mm. Yeah, funny is one word for it. <laughs> Financially crippling <laughs> would be another one. Hey, do you remember that time we? Uh, yeah, man, I do. Mm. I live in a ha- I live in a hut now. Well, Colo bought the bridge. rights. Adam Collins. Yeah, bought that's the, right uh, for the, 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 the yeah. Pakistan series in the yeah. UAE a couple of years yeah. ago. That's right. Okay, we should ring up and ask. Yeah, what's the price? Just quote the price. Tell them the price, son. What would you do if you got the rights? What would you do? I'd mix it with um, nude news. People would tune in now. So you're going to be selling a lot of ads around that. Big time. You get a lot of Manscaped ads with that. Big time. Who's your commentary team off the top of your head? Mark Butcher. Hodge. Brad Hogg. One of his characters from his YouTube channel. Hogg and Hodge. Yep. Yeah. Show back to and pretty blokey. Bert Newton. Love it. He's legless. <laughs> and Molly Meldrum. There's some great combinations there. <laughs> I'm just thinking about matchups, just pairing him. Mm. Auntie Donna. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Now I'm yeah, in. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, yeah. Inspired, unemployed. Oh, yeah. Auntie Donna. Yep. Becky Lucas. Yep. Hello, sport boys. Hello, sport. Batuta. You and me. And Bert Newton. And Bert. <laughs> and Mark War. <laughs> and June. It'd be available. Yeah. It'd be available. June and Bert Newton. <laughs> first, 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 first half hour. First, yeah, that's good. Uh, and Kerry, because then at least we'd be able to talk to him. Yeah. Uh, Jack Palazzo Are writes in. Can get in touch with him? Sorry. <laughs> He says, dear Pezzy, and he goes, hashtag RCDC. Oh, I like this. Bye! I'm a humanitarian researcher. Yeah, I read a bit. Working in a far-flung, hard-to-reach corners of South Sudan. Recently voted the most corrupt country in the world. Something for India and the BCCI to aspire to, perhaps. Anyway, long time, first time. I love the cast. Keep it coming. I'll keep trying to spread the word around here. Maybe book you for a corporate gig in Juba one of these days. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? Juba? Uh, do, Jumba? I do not know. <laughs> Jumba. Yeah, it's definitely Juba. A um, couple of questions for you. Hope you two blokes from the internet can help me with this dilemma that I face every day in the field. How do I explain to youth militia leaders and tribal <laughs> chiefs <laughs> that their time is not coming, that their, their time is not coming, that this will instead be the Asian century and until blokes in Africa learn to reverse lap the new ball over one or develop a <laughs> wanger arm, that's the way it will remain. <laughs> How do I also explain to war-torn, fatherless communities on the verge of famine that I actually, in a way, that actually, in a way, they are lucky to grow up without a dad because their suffering pales in comparison to your dad turning up to cricket for the first time in four years just to watch your spoon wander cover for a badly made twenty odd sixteen and then leave before you've even made it off the field. Cheers, Jack. P.S. Is it weird that I feel safer out here where I could be shot any day? <laughs> than I do when I'm around my father. Luckily, none of this matters. Oh, man. <laughs> That's, I'll, I'll live for that. Jack Palazzo. So, Jack, I just love the He's idea. in South Sudan. Mate, he's a humanitarian researcher <laughs> in South Sudan. And it was at TJC. He could get Boys. shot every day. Yeah. And he's, safer. Ju- and he's just dealing with youth militia leaders and tribal <laughs> chiefs doing some research. Yeah. And he's still running it through the grade cricket prison. <laughs> it just goes to show you can run yeah. anything through it. He sees a nine-year-old with an AK-47 or whatever, and he's like, daddy issues. Oh, mate. Yeah, how often if, you know, if these kids are struggling for whatever reason, you just like work hard. Oh, your boys just got to work hard. <laughs> I'm Rick Stewie, lads. I'm... <laughs> one mistake. My oh, boys, one mistake here. <laughs> Good spread. <laughs> what is it? What are these fucking ratios? <laughs> I 
don't know. I imagine you're sitting around a fire or something. <laughs> Shit tea. <tight>. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck these blokes. Yeah. Late, fine. <laughs> so fine's meeting. It's a fine. Fine's meeting yeah. now. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. You shot that bloke in the leg. You mean, yeah. <laughs> I do not know what happens in South Sudan. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Someone fucks up. That's a fine. <laughs> <laughs> two fingers. Literally cut off two fingers. Not drink two fingers. Fucking That's hell. a case <laughs> of malaria. That's a case of malaria. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we've trivialised that and what's yeah. going on that part. Well, of he look. asked for it. He did ask for it. Liam Latto. That's one of the ones where um, I remember a while ago someone wrote in they they played TJC through the speakers that were they were working in like a theatre and a surgical theatre. Oh, where was oh, that? That's right. That's a couple of years ago. And I think like listening to this shit through that and there's blokes in South Sudan who are dealing with youth militia leaders. I don't think he's I don't think Jack's playing it through Bluetooth <laughs> in Juba. <laughs> Though if he is, please record that and send it to us. Fuck I need to know where Juba is. Yeah. Uh Juba. Yeah. The one I the one I South keep, Sudan. Yeah. Capital of South Sudan. Man, I don't even know where South Sudan is. Yeah. I'm more acquainted with the north, but um, Yeah, more of a north guy. Yeah, I've always been a northman. Yeah. North of the bridge. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's close to like close to Uganda. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'll cut to Uganda, is it okay? So Sudan's its own country in the South Sudan. Yep. North Sudan is kind of a, yeah, it's more niche. Okay. Well, there's a few articles in there. I saw an article in The Australian a couple of days ago about uh, Sudanese migrants aspiring to, like, open the bowling for Australia. Fuck loved, yeah. Uh, yeah, loved it. Fuck Go yeah. for it. That's the kind of gear I'm into. That's yep. good gear. Yeah. Uh, the the article you say I think about a lot was with the a woman who got in touch um, with us, inviting us to uh, join the uh, oh her the hens. her hens yeah, yeah. We're in the UK Nude. yeah 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 I still think we're we going to be strippers we're going to turn up in whites we should have done that in hindsight yeah we should have done that we should have done that yep if you've got a hens <laughs> do not make contact <laughs> Liam Latto writes in boys help. My weekend has been less and I- less than ideal, to Jesus say the least. Christ. Let me begin on Friday afternoon where I'm called in by the second team captain for a game the next day that I have no particular interest in playing as I have alcohol plans on said Saturday in question. Friday night, I'm coaching my club's under-12s team in a game at a local rival. Upon arriving at their ground, I spot an 11-year-old kid who's actually quite good as he used to train with us, but chose at the start of this season to fuck off to the private school affiliate he now plays for. He proceeded to take apart our batting lineup, taking eight wickets in three overs. Holy shit. At the end of the game, he came over to me with a beaming smile and said, Hi, I remember you. To which I replied, Ah, yes, you bowled well tonight, young man. However, what I actually said in my head was, fuck off, you little Judas cunt. (laughs) (laughs) He's 11. Why am I, a 20-year-old, being bothered by a decision from an 11-year-old to play with his mates? And why the fuck am I spending my Friday umpiring a shit game of quick cricket that doesn't fucking matter as there's no proper league and every game's a friendly? (laughs) Saturday, I don't know where to start with that. There's uh, yeah. plenty wrong with it beyond fucking being a league. But um, yeah. Saturday, the prior game, <laughs> the prior stated game has arrived. I've somehow accumulated three different bags with various required shit in each, Jeez. plus a footy to take with me. Roasting hot day, whites have shrunk in the wash, so they're now basically a layer of Under Armour that I simply <laughs> have to wear a jumper over. Fucking sweating. What the fuck? <laughs> this is good gear. <laughs> Bowling first, we collectively drop their captain eight times as he scores 130. I don't take a wicket, barely get the ball in the field, and bat 11, fucking up getting us a batting point as I spoon one to cover, needing just two runs for said point. However, in the grand scheme, what the fuck's the point as we still lose by 120 runs? Drinking plans are now well and truly fucked, and I get two beers and a cocktail pitcher in before the pub shuts. Sunday, captaining a third team against one of the shittest teams in the league, we lose by 60 runs as we concede 52 extras, 43 of which are buyers as our so-called wicketkeeper is scared of catching the fucking cricket ball. Our best bat gets out to a 12-year-old bowling in coloured kit in his first ever senior cricket game. (laughs) 
Why do I still play this shit game? Why the fuck do I spend my Friday, Saturday, and Sunday every evening, every weekend dabbling in this sport I'm just bad at and cannot be asked playing most of the time? Also, will a new stick help my woes? Liam, Scotland. That's a great question, Liam. Mm. That's a great question. We've really traversed some territory here, Pez. Yes. Scotland, I've got to look that up as where that is as well. Uh, it might be in North Sudan. Scotland. Um, yes. Now, Liam, the shortest answer here, which will not be my final answer, is to buy a new stick because that will actually make you feel something. I also love the general anger which which this was uh, this question was presented. Mm-hmm. He's got some anger towards an eleven year old. He's got anger towards his wicket keeper. Um, he hasn't said it explicitly. There's definitely some dad stuff going on. He's got some issues with his washing machine. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's basically a layer of Under Armour that I simply have to wear a jumper over. Mm. It's all good gear, Liam. It's all good gear. Um, now, t- shall we start with? Why am I so invested in this 11-year-old um, who's played for his private school affiliate uh, instead of playing for his uh, – used to ch- sorry, 11-year-old kid who's actually quite good as he used to train with us. So he never actually played with him, but he trained with, with Liam's team, and now he's fucked off to the private school affiliate. Yeah. Now, this guy has taken eight wickets and three overs. Mm. I'm not sure what standard this league is, but this guy this guy has potential international levels. Mm. You never really hear stories like, you know when like – Prodigy batsman, I'm talking Shub McGill, Ian Bell, Ricky Ponting. Mm. Guys who are like going to be guns from the age of like like minus six months, embryonic gear. Embryonic guns. Embryonic guns. But you never really hear about like the bowlers. Like what was Brett Lee doing when he was 15? He would have been scaring cunts, taking, taking eight wickets and three overs. Eight wickets and three overs is a real skill. That's, that's decimation levels. That's the equivalent of like... We heard from Shubman Gill during the week. He said he scored 351 in an under-16 game when he was 11, yeah. and he scored 400 as well. It's actually parental negligence because if a child goes on the field and is able to take eight wickets in 18 balls, yeah. parents haven't been watching that the child is not suited to that level. <laughs> it's negligence. He should play up. Yeah, that's docs. That's docs stuff. Docs gear. Pat Cummins told me in a one-on-one interview once that uh, parents – Yeah. I think we might have asked him on this show as well. Yeah. Parents used to, of, op, from the opposition team, used to stop him before going on the field and ask him to take it easy yeah. on their son. Yeah. So, I There's guess that. he was good. <laughs> yeah. But you never hear, yeah, apart from that, you never hear the stories of like, just people absolutely terrorizing yeah. as bowlers, gun bowlers. Like, yeah. I guess. Because it, would be, it wouldn't be spinners doing that as nah. kids. Like, spinners develop quicker than batters do as kids, like when you can toss it up. Mm. But... The ball is bouncing over the stumps. Yeah. So if you take 18-18, you're just hitting the stumps, you're just basically. Hitting the stumps. You're not like nicking blokes a second slip sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I want to see, footi- see footage of this. I want to see – you know how like because of things like um, like my cricket's coverage and like frog box and stuff, Yeah, you see like basically every amateur game at a certain level is now being covered. Uh, like there's, there's footage of it now. Yeah. And it's a little bit how like – so for instance, when you and I grew up as infant children – there's probably not that many photos or videos of us, you know. No, there's not. So, but then now, like everyone who's got a child is taking photos every day and there's just much, much more um, evidence of your upbringing, I suppose. So I've got very little footage of any cricket that I ever played, mm. especially video, but now, but now there's... I've got none. But fucking every, every game is videoed now in mm. some capacity. I'd love to see more of this gear. I want to see an 11-year-old absolutely dominate other 11-year-olds on the cricket field. If you got like an email now... <laughs> Saying, <laughs> say, I'd be surprised. Saying, uh, we, we actually have captured footage of your entire junior career, oh, and shit. you can pick any game, any, or any games you want. Holy shit! Like, we've got a lot of work to do this week. Yeah. Uh, do, do you think you'd be within your rights to say, look, Pezza, uh, just we need a few days off here because <laughs> I'm going to watch every ball of everything. I'm going to go through the archives. Do you think you would, or, or do you think it'd still just be like TikTok stuff? You scroll through, just see a couple things. <laughs> ADD stuff would come into play. <laughs> definitely, definitely the latter. <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is, when you, you want to see it, you think about now. I wasn't like such a good junior player that I was like, oh, there's so many happy memories there. Right. I still, I'm like Bradman. I still fail all the time. I'm like Bradman. I wasn't so good. I'm more like Bradman. <laughs> <laughs> my point was that, like, even Bradman failed all the time. Yeah. So, like, my junior career is just littered with mistakes and errors, and that's before we even got on the field, mate. Ah. Uh, uh, this is gonna, this is gonna, you're gonna be able to pick holes in this. But now some CCTV footage of circuits on a Friday night. Yeah, I'm into that gear. Mate, I remember the first time I saw myself bowl. 
leg spin. Yeah, and right. It was at a um, to be fair to me, it was at a uh, like a I actually got a day off school to go to a spin uh, like a spinner's day at the SCG when I was sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, think we spoke I was about this before, invited by Steve Rickson, who was a New South Wales coach. Right. McGill was there. Yep. Michael Bevan. Bevan. Yep. A couple other first graders, and then me, and uh, I hadn't seen myself bowl before. You're I, the only sixteen year old there. Yeah. Fuck, that's good. Yeah, I don't know how it, 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 it just like emerging blue stuff. No, nah, it was it was it was like this weird day. Like I don't know, it was a, this weird fucking day. Yeah, and um, I'd make a wish or something. <laughs> looking back, actually, I was sick. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's just just had a runny nose. <laughs> I think I was coming down. It's like, like I now that I think about it, <laughs> a bit of a sore throat that day. Dad just never told me I was. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just make a wish. <laughs> Mate, felt, Everyone was super nice. I felt when I watched myself on the video because it. <laughs> and I still, I still remember like uh, there was a few things I remember from that day. But like we're yeah. sitting in the SCG lecture theatre and like we were talking about fields, like fields for spinners. I didn't get it because like what field do you bowl with? And I'm like, yeah. well, depends who's batting. I, I don't yeah. know, you know. And yeah, yeah. McGill's talking about like, well, I just I was bowling here to Lara and I just he couldn't keep hitting me through here, but he kept doing it. Yeah, like, sure. What am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I saw myself on the video. <laughs> And I thought, yeah. I was like, I, my hero was Shane Warne. Right. And I just thought I bowled like Shane Warne. Yeah, I thought yeah. that's what I looked like. Yep, yep. And I looked at whatever the fuck I was putting out there. Yeah. It was, it was embarrassing. Like and Adams. it was obviously everyone had already seen what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, I think maybe then was when I was like, oh, I, I, I didn't, I just did not look how I thought I did. Yeah. In any way. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that was when the, the dream died or something. Yeah, right. So I'm just thinking maybe I wouldn't want to go back. Wouldn't want to go it. back because yeah. you're just like, nah. I just prefer the uh, the lies I tell myself. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. Sort of my memories are like playing like junior cricket, but I was 16, like playing like a rep game or something like that, and it was I was wicket keeping, and some the someone was bowling, and um, I had my head down, just like just distracted, <laughs> and I just missed the ball, oh, <laughs> and it tight. <laughs> no, it didn't hit me. No, the batsman like played it, <laughs> but I I was I was like looked up oh, and then. Like the ball was a cover, and I was like, "I've that, just missed an entire ball there." Mate, that, that's that like, that's my childhood. That's my childhood memories of playing cricket. I just missed that. It just goes to show, though, you know, you, you can put all this like gravitas and prestige around like representative cricket. Like mm. you're a twelve year old. Yeah, yeah. You just got distracted, yeah. and that's what. And your head was yeah. down, and someone bowled it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it was still there. <laughs> or in your crouch position. Yeah. No. 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 I was like, like hands on my hands on my knees, just like just sort of bent over, just like looking at the ground. <laughs> Slip was talking, then they stopped for a bit, and then the ball was a cover. <laughs> the ball was a cover? What do you mean? <laughs> the batsman was like pushing oh, the ball just, to the oh, offside. Right. Yeah. I just in my head, he like left it, he just gone straight past. <laughs> <laughs> hey, still remember. Uh, I still remember playing a game of club. This is a club cricket cast now. I suppose it is called a great <laughs> Do you know where you are? It's like me. I Would still remember. Can? I still remember. Someone bowling to this guy um, who ended up becoming a good friend, actually, and his dad was umpire. I still remember, like, him being caught behind and his dad raising his finger and scratching his nose. I was just, you know, oh, like, that's... Yeah. Now, just, you know, I'm just talking about the real amateurishness yeah, of what yeah. we thought was actually really yeah. prestigious Well, Greg Davidson time. did that at the B, in the BBL. Good so. point. So and it can happen. That's right. Can and happen. that man's name, Ian Davidson. <laughs> 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 well, Liam from Scotland. Yeah. Hope that helped. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jack, in South Sudan. Hope you well. Stay safe. Stay safe, brother. I hope you receive this in time. If you can get footage of South Sudanese tribal militia leaders yeah. listening to this, please. Shadow batting, with a, shadow batting with an MK47. <laughs> <laughs> MK. Is MK. That? No, it's yeah. AK47. Yeah. I can't say I know my guns. Yeah, I'm not. No, uh, yeah. I need some bicep kills. All right. Thank you to Budgie Smuggler for making this all that this happened. Pezzy Lad, thank you. Thank you. Patreon.com forward slash Grey Cricketer for more stuff during this week and forevermore. See you guys later.